Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about number knowledge which is a type of measurement and data question. In this video we're focusing on the topic of mass. Now number knowledge questions usually involve the comprehension of numbers including Roman numerals, special numbers such as prime numbers, square numbers and Fibonacci numbers. It may also involve conversions between units. It's quite important for us to understand the units used to represent certain concepts. Okay, so this brief description told us about what we can expect in number knowledge questions. And because the name is number knowledge rather than, uh, say, for example, arithmetic operations, these questions kind of dwell more on the conceptual value of numbers rather than with more to do with calculations, which is why the question asks us about things like Roman numerals, things like prime numbers, square numbers, and Fibonacci numbers. Now, all of these aren't as relevant to the concept of number knowledge mass questions, but it is it can pop up sometimes. So it's quite handy to have some knowledge of what these can involve. So just to have a quick refresher of each of these different things that can appear in these types of questions, Roman numbers are, well, what they use in Rome. And it's a bit easier to use Arabic numbers, which is the normal numbers we usually deal with, but Roman numbers are fairly uh, similar in concept. They've got letters to represent the different numbers, and they use different letters depending on um, what value it represents. So the letter I is the most basic one, and you can add the I's to represent bigger numbers. So I being 1, I, I being 2, and I, I, I being 3. Now the issue with this is that you can see that if you wanted to represent 100, drawing 100 of these lines is not practical and just isn't helpful for anyone trying to read. So thankfully they've come up with a system that uh, they, they use different letters for bigger numbers. So for example, the next big number is 5, which is the letter V. So the number 4 is represented as putting the smaller number, I, just before the big number. And the next number is represented by putting the, the big number first and then putting the smaller number afterwards. And that kind of concept where this pattern is then repeated and the only thing that changes is what letter is used to represent the next big number. So those numbers would be the letter X for the number 10, the letter C for the number 100, the letter L, oh, I forgot the letter L, sorry. Uh, the letter L for the number 50, letter C for the number 100, um, what else is there? Letter M for the number 1000, and let's not forget the number for 500, which is D. So using any combination of numbers uh, here will allow you to write most of the, the numbers that these questions surrounding Roman numerals will ask you to do. The next concept is prime numbers, and prime numbers are just any number that can be divided by itself and one only. So that means the smallest prime number is 2 because 2 can only be figured out by doing 2 times 1. Now that's funny because 2 is the only even prime number, and that's because any other bigger number that's even, for example 4, can be figured out then with more different factors. So for example you can do 2 times 2, you can do 4 times 1, and the second you have more than one of these uh, methods of figuring out this big number, you're no longer a prime number. And since all even numbers can be divided by 2, you're not going to have any more even numbers. So any numbers after than that that are prime are going to be odd. We kind of know what square numbers are. Square numbers are just numbers where it's the same number multiplied by its own number. So for example, 5 times 5, 1 times 1, things like that. And it's quite important to memorize or at least be familiar with the common square numbers all the way from 1 to 12 because you'll see those numbers very often and they often lead to you recognizing patterns or whatever the question needs you to find. So those are also quite handy. The last thing to briefly talk about are Fibonacci numbers. And Fibonacci numbers are also very commonly used when we talk about patterns because this is a phenomenon or 
a mathematical pattern that was officially transcribed by the mathematician known as Fibonacci. What it is is that it's essentially a pattern where you've got a list of numbers, 0 and 1, starting off with these two numbers. And the third number is always going to be the addition of the previous two numbers. So 0 plus 1 gives us 1. The next number is adding the, the previous two numbers, 1 and 1, giving us 2. The next number is adding the next two numbers, 1 and 2, giving us 3, and that pattern goes on and so on and so forth. And again, this is also very similar to square numbers is that in that it's quite handy to recognize the set of numbers in the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence because t chances are you'll see them quite often. Now, all of these can appear sometimes for mass, but I think the most important thing for mass is to understand the units used to represent these concepts. So that means questions may often ask us to convert between different mass units, and we know that mass has its own sets of units separate to ones, for example, such as length or speed or time. So the units for mass, I'm sure we're all quite familiar with, uh, often begin with the single gram. Now, if we want to convert grams to kilograms, which is the next bigger unit, we always convert these by, well, if we're trying to make the unit bigger, then we have to divide by a thousand. And we try to make the unit smaller, then we have to multiply by a thousand. And the, th the fun thing about the metric units is that it's always going to be multiplied or divided by the same number for every time we change units. So even if we're dealing with milligrams, which you may see, but probably not very often. Or if we wanted to talk about tons, the conversion is still the same. We still divide by a thousand or multiply by a thousand, depending on what the conversion we want to do is. Uh, in this direction. Oops, in this direction. Okay, so that is fairly straightforward. Number knowledge for mass just requires us to understand the mass as a concept. So as soon as we understand that mass is just how heavy something is, we can usually work out these questions without too much trouble. So let's see if we can do so by tackling this example question. There is something wrong with the scale. It cannot show the true weight of any item placed onto it as the number does not start at zero kilograms when there is nothing on it. Michelle has two cans, one green one that has the mass of two kilograms and one blue one that has the mass of four kilograms. When they are placed on the scale as shown below, sorry, as shown above, try to say above and below at the same time, uh, the number on the scale reads four kilograms and six kilograms respectively. What will the number on the scale read when there is nothing on the scale? Okay, so again, this is a number knowledge question, which means that we need to deal with mass as a fundamental concept. Now, we know that um, mass is just how heavy something is, and these scales measure how heavy something is. And typically, you would assume them to do so accurately, but in this case, it is not. The number does not start at zero kilograms. So we have to assume that it's always going to read the same number when nothing's on it. And that number is going to be added on to whatever you place on top of the scale. And we use that information to figure out what is going on with this scale. So for the scenario with this first scale, we've got a um, mass that we know to have a true weight of two kilograms, and yet the, the scale is saying that this thing weighs four kilograms. So if we wanted to represent what's going on in the, the scale, we could say that the true weight, or sorry, the, the weight reading, scale reading, is going to equal the true uh, mass of the object, and let's just move this here so we have more space, plus the error present with the scale that's causing it to spit out this random number. And in the first case scenario, the scale reading is four kilograms, and the true mass is two kilograms, 
and we have an error. So in this case scenario, the error is clearly just two kilograms. Now we need to see if this error is going to be the same for every time you put a mass on top of it, because it, for all we know, this error could be proportionate to the mass you place on the object, which would complicate things. So let's just double check by looking at the second case scenario. So in this case, we are told this blue mass has a mass of four kilograms. So then our number sentence would say the reading is six kilograms, the true mass is four kilograms, and we have the error that is causing the, the reading to be slightly different. And we again can see that the error maintained the same to be two kilograms. So that must be the amount that is off every single time. So that's going to be the amount that's going to be read on the scale even when nothing is placed upon it since that is what we calculated to be the error. So that means the correct response has to be option D for two kilograms. Okay, so through this question, we saw that it was quite important to understand what mass actually is it's, and what its relation to the scale reading was. With that, we are going to be finishing off this video and I hope that the techniques here would have helped you in the future. Thanks everyone so much for listening.